George, I've uh, watched as a bystander as the multiverse went from science fiction to metaphysics to speculative physics to con conventional wisdom. Um, as of in recent times, there's been a pretty uh, heated dispute among uh, uh, what I would say is the mainstream uh, cosmologists and physicists who uh, believe that inflation theory is uh, is the way to explain this universe and by natural extension, the inflation generates multiple universes, other ways to generate multiple universes, quantum mechanics and stuff. Um, and then a smaller group of, 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 of distinguished uh, uh, cosmologists who think that it's, it's premature or even that it's not science. And this debate is, uh, is fairly heated. Uh, you're not neutral in this, I think. Yeah, no, well, I, I would be slightly cautious about your first statement. I think there's a very voluble group of people who support the multiverse. I don't think that means that they are necessarily <laughs> the majority. Uh, just as a specific example, if you pick up any virtually any present-day cosmology textbook, mm. you won't find the multiverse in there. If you pick up um, Mukhanov or... Um, uh, just just go and take a look in a bookstore on Amazon at standard cosmology yeah. texts. It actually isn't there. It's a small group of rather volume of people <laughs> who are supporting oh, okay. it. Okay, well, I mean, I could argue about the books. Books in, in, in science are generally several yeah. generations behind in yeah. terms of thinking because they don't want to yeah. deal with speculation. Um, it, it has become much more... Um, influential and possibly the biggest reason is because of, of Steven Weinberg and his argument that it's, it's the only way to explain the value of the cosmological constant lambda. Mm -hmm. And I think probably that's been the one. And on the other one is the claim that inflation will almost inevitably lead to a multiverse. Now, that second one has been disputed. Um, for instance, Jerome Martin at the meeting we've just been to has disputed that claim and says it relies on a series of steps which are not necessarily true. Um, in fact, the, uh, the WMAP satellite um, prefers a potential which is not a potential of the ones which naturally uh, produce multiverses. So um, it certainly is part of the mainstream discussion. Um, the f the fine-tuning the fine-tuning argument is a philosophical argument and so my own position together with other people like Joe Silk has been it's fine to have philosophical arguments like this is the only way to produce the cosmological constant but you must um, distinguish that argument from actually going and doing an experiment which, or observation which actually shows us the multiverse is there. Mm -hmm. And I think we should not lose that golden standard of what makes science science. Well, okay, I mean, that's uh, certainly a, a legitimate position, but uh, because of the nature of the multiverse itself being uh, almost by definition beyond the light cone, so yeah. to speak, that, that, yeah. that we can have a, ever access to, um, you can't exclude a de a, something that may be out there because you, you, you're, you're limited in your science. You may have to define it differently. Define what differently? De 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 define uh, how you access, access knowledge. Yeah, um, so various people have been trying to redefine science in order to make the multiverse science. <laughs> yeah. um, and I think that's an exceedingly dangerous move in an era in which science is under attack from all sorts of quarters, the climate change denialists, the vaccine denialists, and so on. Theoretical physics is supposed to be the hard core, the place where yeah. you really can trust science. Right. And when theoretical physics starts abandoning the bulwark and kind of going off into the fields with the flowers, then it starts to get rather worrying in terms of defending real science from... Um, from people who want to attack science. So I, th I think this is really dangerous. So if, if, let, me, let me try to characterize you and see if I got it right. That uh, you would be uh, very much against having the impression that the multiverse is science because then it degrades science or, or, or changes the nature of science, which has c c catenizing dangers. I'm against claiming it is tested science. I'm very happy to have it as a scientific hypothesis, as something to be explored. One looks at all of its uh, implications and so on. But what I'm against is saying that it is a tested outcome of science. And in particular, what I dislike is articles coming out about 
um, your alter ego is so many billion miles uh, away from you in the multiverse. Yeah, I mean, that, that to me is just uh, philosophically naive anyway. Yeah. I mean, I mean and, at, the, at the best it's a duplicate and that has no relationship, even if you could show that. It, uh, yeah, and, and, and then there's this issue that a great deal of these um, books and articles talk about the infinities of other universes. Now, what some of my scientific colleagues of not taking into seriously is the fact that infinity is not a big number. It is an amount which is bigger than any number which can ever be attained, no matter what you do, no matter how you try, no matter how you go. And any claim that there's an infinity of galaxies, stars, universes, or anything is not a scientifically testable claim because you cannot actually prove it's true, no matter how long you count them and so on. If you count a billion, 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 <laughs> you haven't taken the first step on the way to Right. way to proving it's there's effectively an infinity. zero compared to infinity. Yeah. And so um, any multiverse text which talks about infinities is in my opinion not science. Okay, so that's clear. Let me ask you from I'm now going to move into philosophy. We're yeah. now we're now in philosophy so you have a, we have freedom. Okay? okay? Uh, philosophically, uh, do you think that the, uh, the multiverse uh, uh, a makes sense and if you think it makes sense, do you think it's more likely than not? I think philosophically it's a very appealing option because it does provide a way of doing anthropic, um, explaining anthropic coincidences in, 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 a, in a naturalistic way. However, <laughs> what this forgets <laughs> is that the fact that you've got an explanation uh, is not a fundamental explanation. There's no reason whatever that you might not have a God who created a multiverse. In other words, we, in fact, I've been thinking of writing a book called The God of the Multiverse. <laughs> so having a multiverse is an explanation up to a certain level, but it doesn't give you the final explanation because, for instance, it doesn't make the choice between the multiverse just happened by chance or the multiverse was designed in such a way that it would produce people in the multiverse. If one believes in God, is a multiverse more or less likely, as a, using almost a Bayesian statistics? Well, it's, it's, if it's, God is a prior, is the multiverse more or less likely? Well, it's, 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 to me, there's actually an analogy with, with um, evolutionary theory. Uh, the original idea was God had this shelf of animals he picked <laughs> off and put them down. And then the modern theist says, well, God created a mechanism which would create animals and so on. So then with the universe, you could have said God created a universe with a constant, yeah. or you could have said God creates a mechanism which will create. Right, right. <laughs> and so uh, at a certain level, you can have it both ways. You can have the <laughs> multiverse and the theology. <laughs> and uh, th th that in many ways is a perfectly satisfactory view.